Okay, so I'm going to operate under the assumption you know how to thread a needle. <laughs> okay, um, so you can single thread or double thread. I double thread because I like being secure. Um, <laughs> I do like security. I like security. Okay, so generally you want to take about like an arm's length of thread. So before you tie it off, hold the needle in one hand, hold the thread in the other hand, stretch out your arm with one or the other. Perfect. And then you're going to cut off this thing. Or just like, yeah, just like 10 to bite. Um, okay, and then to double, if you're going to be double stitching, which you might as well because that's what we're all doing, um, line up the two ends of your thread. And then tie it in a little circle around your finger and pull the end of the Pull the end through. Zippers are terrible. Actually, don't zipper. That's your advice about zippers. I don't use zippers. Make everything out of knits. That's, don't make everything out of knits. Knits are terrible too. I'm just going to start with the basic, most basic stitch you can possibly have, which is called the basting stitch or the running stitch. Um, a lot of technical terminology for sewing will call it the basting stitch, so if you're using a pattern, for example, and it says baste these two pieces together, that doesn't mean use the turkey baster. It means you're just going to be just loosely sewing the pieces together. Um, a basting stitch is not meant to be permanent, is the most important thing to remember. It is meant to temporarily hold pieces of fabric together. Um, so if you're holding together two really slippery pieces of fabric or two pieces of fabric that like to stretch a lot um, before you run it through a machine, basting stitch is good for that. Um, or if you just want something to kind of stay in place while you're affixing something else to it, basting stitch is good for that too. So it is very, very simple. As always, you're going to start from the back because you want your knot to not be visible on the front of your fabric. So if you come up from behind, you just poke your needle through your fabric. Pink. And then you're just going to pick a distance. I usually like to do I don't know, half a centimeter away or so um, because the bigger the distance between your stitches are, the looser it's going to be held together. Um, so the closer you are, a little bit more, you have a little bit more stability. Um, just pick a distance about as straight as you can get it over and push through from the front and just pull through. If you pull really taut though, um, your fabric is going to bunch on you. So that's why this is a temporary stitch, is because um, you can, you know what I mean, you can pull things. The only tension that is created when using the stitch is what you're doing with your own hands. So then you're going to do the same thing from the back, go about the same distance over, try to keep it as straight as you can, and just come up from the back. Okay. And continue this procedure, trying to keep it as straight as you can. Completed several of these stitches. You should have something that looks kind of like that. So, I'm um, terribly uncoordinated when it comes to sewing in straight lines. I can't do it. Um, so, yours should look neater than mine does right now. Um, I'm not very good at seeing in straight lines. If you really want it to be really, really, really straight, you can use a ruler and sew along the edge of a ruler, but who has time for that, let's be real. Um, so once you have finished with a stitch on the back, so the same side as your knot, um, you're going to want to cut and tie off what you're doing. Um, so the easiest way for me to do it when I'm double stitching, which means that you have technically a nice little sure. loop of fabric, is to just cut the loop open, and then tie them in a nice little regular knot like you would normally tie a knot, and pull taut to the fabric. Not that taut, <laughs> but taut. I usually tie a knot a couple times because the bigger the knot, the less likely it is going to be to pull through your fabric. So, after a couple knots, you can see it's in there pretty solidly. If I tug on it, it's not going to come loose. 
I'm getting this beautiful little stitch. And then you can trim your ends, but that's not strictly essential right now. Especially because we don't have the scissors and we just have a thread ripper. So, it's really good for, um, it is actually a pretty stable stitch. So if you want to actually hold two pieces of fabric together, the back stitch will work on like the basting stitch. If you want them to stay together permanently. Um, just for the sake of this too, you don't need another piece of fabric behind your piece now. It's going to work. Um, so the um, back stitch is backwards. Haha, <laughs> pun not intended. Um, because you're going to start, at, you're going to poke through your needle at the front. I say front, um, but technically um, this is a weird stitch because it's going to reverse your sides. Um, so what we're going to see is going to end up being the back side of the fabric, and then the nice looking side is going to be on the opposite side. So if you're actually using this to sew a costume, you're just going to want to be mindful of what side is going to look like what, because you're going to have one really clean looking side, and you're going to have one not so clean looking side. Um, so it kind of starts off like the basting stitch again, where you just go over one stitch, but instead of pulling it all the way through, you are going to leave yourself a loop. You leave yourself a nice little loop here, and then you're going to go between the middle back between the middle of your two stitches, push up through here, and if you are double sewing, you're going to push your needle between the two pieces of thread. So you're making a loop, and then you pull it through the loop. Come on. There we go. So, on this side, you're just going to see nothing but a nice tiny little stitch. On the other side, you should have this piece of thread coming up through the middle of these two. I'm just going to do the same thing. Are you going to go over another space? Push straight through, leave yourself a nice little loop. Okay, pick in your spool of thread. And then when you go from the back, you're going to come up through the middle and straight through that loop. Right. I wouldn't suggest doing it unless you like, need to keep it out. So this one is the whip stitch, which we're actually going to do along the edge of the fabric. <laughs> um, this can also be used to help hold pieces of fabric together. Um, not super securely, but it's at least an option, um, so you don't have to discount it immediately right away. Um, Whip stitching is essentially doing a basting stitch, but doing it around the edge of a piece of fabric. So if you start kind of towards the edge, um, you can leave yourself as much or as little space as you really feel like. Um, stop it. Yep, you're just going to, instead of going forward and backwards, you're just going to come over and around. So you're going to pull through, it's going to look like that. Where the, if you pull really hard, the fabric's going to roll in, you don't necessarily want that. And then, um, but instead of, you know what I mean, from the front and then the back, you're always going to go through the same side and just pull. It's too long. You made a pocket. It's not attached to any pants. Because it has to be for the electron. And actually, the wall would be thicker at the beginning. Like, if you're going to really simple, like, be a wizard. Like, don't have to make a pocket. Okay, this one is very straight. And I've already gotten this tangled. Good job. It is really tight. So then this would be used wow. for... I screwed that up. What exactly would you want to use this for? 
Um, you can do it to um, as kind of. Um, it's a good thing to if you have a fabric that's gonna fray a lot. Um, you can use this before you actually hem it. This is not in any way, shape, or form um, a proper thing to use instead of a hem. Um, but if you have a fabric that's going to be really prone to fraying, um, you can use this stitch around the edges to give yourself a little more of an edge um, and hopefully keep things together a little bit more securely um, before you actually go ahead and hem it. Um, if you are sewing two pieces of fabric together with it, you are... I don't know what's happening here. Um, let's just say... I'm going to sew these pieces together. Um, it will work if you want to sew pieces, two pieces of fabric together. Um, it's not going to be 100% secure, but it's going to be you know, better than a basting stitch at least. It's got a good aesthetic too. It, yeah, it looks kind of neat. Um, and if you want to be really fancy, you can actually um, go... It's called the herringbone stitch, which is just going backwards, so you make X's. I'm not going to officially cover that one, but it's one of those things that you can kind of figure out um, on your own if you want it to look a little bit more fancy and be a little bit more secure. Um, herringbone is going to give you that extra edge of security. Um, so if you remember that name by any chance, you can look it up online, herringbone stitch. It's pretty similar. Okay. Um, so yeah, so if you were to use that to keep two pieces of fabric together, um, it's good for kind of giving you an invisible edge. Um, I've just done this very poorly, so you can see the um, thread, but if you do it correctly, you will get almost an invisible seam between the two. Hooray for fabric. <laughs> If we still have time, I will show you one more, which is almost the exact same thing as this, but even better for stability. Um, I think we like stability here. Stabili well, stability is good, because if you're actually going to sew a costume together by hand, you obviously don't want your stitches to pull out. Um, so that's why when I say, like, this one's really stable, this one's really not, um, it's all coming down to whether or not you're actually going to sew a costume with it. So. See, like here, these two, I did really magically well because you can barely see the thread between the two. Um, so if you want to hold pieces of fabric together, this is a way to do it as well, is this, um, the whip stitch. What is the key to making them invisible? Invisible? Invisible. Um, smaller distance to the hem, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know 100% to be entirely honest, um, but I think the closer you get to the hem, um, the more invisible it's gonna be, but I mean, then you... So if you do like a stitch like up here, as opposed to like back here, yeah, it's gonna be more visible the farther away from the edge of the, edge of the fabric that you go, um, and the closer you are, the more invisible it's gonna be. Yeah. So, I mean, that one's really visible just because I just did it, but theoretically, the point becomes that, you know, and if you're using, um, obviously if you're using two pieces of fabric that are the same color as each other, and the same color thread as your fabric, no one's going to notice, unless they're looking really closely, and if they are looking that closely, you don't need those people in your life. <laughs> no one should be looking that closely at your costumes. Judges. Well, okay. <laughs> unless, yeah, you're being judged in competitive competition, but that's a lot of